Morning, morning, morning. How are you? Welcome to Grounded in His Promises. How are you? I'm Chip Mitchell, and I want to welcome you to another day in God's Word where we have just a fantastic time studying out the Word of God, being inspired, encouraged, and uplifted. What's happening, David? How you doing, man? I'm feeling so much better today. Mike, what's up, man? Thanks so much for the help. I so appreciate both of you guys monitoring. Uh, remember, I'm cool with disagreeing, but it's the disrespect and distractions. You you get my drift. You know me, so I trust uh, you guys' assessment. Thank you so much for your help and support. This is where we go live here on TikTok, having a blast going through the Word of God. Uh, thank you, David. Thank you. <laughs> I was feeling terrible yesterday morning, and I had a long day ahead of me, and I just needed to chill and uh, get my, so my head was pounding early in the morning. So I'm much better today and uh, feeling good. I was able to get through the day. I had a great day yesterday. I had a big service outdoor tailgate and everything. Get some potassium in me because I cramped up a little bit <laughs> this morning too. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I was, I just woke up, my head was pounded and I was just like, oh, and I had a full day. So sorry about yesterday, but I'm good today. Thank you so much for your prayers and concerns. Hope all is well with everyone in their family. <laughs> Don't get the boot. That's right. <laughs> good to see everyone. Thank you so much for uh, continually support the channel here, Grounded in His Promises. This is where we have a great time studying out God's Word, having a blast. Uh, digging uh, uh, deep into the scriptures. And uh, today we're going to be uh, continuing our journey in uh, Luke uh, chapter 10. Uh, that's where uh, we left off a couple days ago. Um, and we're just going to have a great time uh, uh, continuing to study this out. I hope you've been uplifted, inspired, and encouraged uh, as uh, we continue this, this time, this epic journey. That's been over a year having a blast uh, studying out the biblical text. We've uploaded everything to YouTube. So if you've not connected uh, to YouTube, please go over and subscribe at my YouTube channel at Chip Mitchell 23. Uh, that's where uh, uh, you can get all the different studies that we've done. We've got, I think, I think it's five, over 550. I think we're right at 550. Uh, so, um, having a good time. And today we're going to be in Luke chapter 10. So get your uh, 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 pens, your highlighters, your markers, whatever you use, notebooks, whether digital or paper, as we uh, continue uh, this journey. Boy, let's go to God in uh, prayer and uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get going. Father, thank you for today, a new day new opportunity to follow you, to be inspired and encouraged uh, uh, in our faith. Uh, but we pray that we live in such a way that brings honor to your name. Thank you for the pioneers of faith before us that um, stood in uh, horrific scenarios and they kept the faith. They were determined to proclaim the truth about Jesus, despite the great opposition Despite not having a large institution, but just a few, they, they stood the test and they proclaimed it. And your spirit works so powerfully through them, Father. We're so thankful uh, for them and who they were and what they did. And uh, Father, and then those other pioneers like Luke who wrote these things down, that we would have uh, a testimony that uh, gives us faith. Uh, in what took place, and that we would likewise turn around and do the same. Enable us as your servants to do that. Thank you for your spirit that enables us to overcome all the obstacles and challenges we face. Father, we need you. We love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, amen, and good morning. I went and got uh, Starbucks this morning. This is pumpkin spice. Now, they only do this in the fall, I believe. And boy, is it awesome. <laughs> I love it. Way too expensive, though. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you. But boy, is it good. All right, let's turn over to Luke chapter 10. Um, Jesus 
um, had just sent out the 72. They come, they come back. They're rejoicing. Jesus says, um, um, you know, they say, even the demons submit to us in your name. Very, very um, powerful moment when you think about Jesus uh, uh, um, appointing these 72 and him giving them authority uh, for miraculous signs and wonders. You know, this is an interesting uh, thing. And, and you've got to realize that when he did this, um, it wasn't like when they came back, he said, okay, I'm taking that authority away. Because prior to this, we know um, Jesus' disciples got into an intense argument uh, with some others when they could not cast out a particular demon in the, in the father's son. So evidently, they were continuing to do miraculous signs. Now, we don't have all those recordings um, during that time when they were walking with Jesus. But when you go to um, Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, it, it speaks of the apostles doing miraculous signs and wonders. And I, I believe that that apostle is, that is, is not just the 12. I think it's that other group of that 72 as well. I think it's a part of that group of 120. I, I, because um, uh, it, it just, it, you know, you don't send out 72, they're casting out demons, they're healing the sick, and then all of a sudden they come back and they can't do that anymore. Like that's a, but we don't have much record of that in the Gospels, but there are some indications that that, that seem to continue. And uh, because they even asked, well, why couldn't we? In other words, they... They were attempting many things uh, in this in this time period with Jesus prior to the crucifixion, and uh, you know, so they come back. The seventy-two, you know, that's that's pretty powerful. Then in verse eighteen, he replied, "I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes, scorpions, and to overcome all the power of the enemy." This, I love this statement. Um, I have given you authority to trample snake. In other words, you're going to, um, you're going to overcome many obstacles. You know, you're, you're, you're going to overcome many obstacles, scorpion snakes, things of that nature. Um, and, but then he also says, and overcome all the power of the enemy. Wow. Like th this is something that we have to understand as followers of Jesus, we have the ability to overcome all obstacles. Now, overcoming does not mean that uh, there won't be suffering, there won't be sickness and death. What it means is you can overcome all of that. You can get through all of that. You are able to endure that and continue in a life that uh, brings honor to God. We had a very dear friend over yesterday evening, and um, she's just been a part of our family for many years. And tragically, many, many years ago, um, about 20 or so, 30 years ago, her brother and father were murdered. And how this took place is the robbers had a friend knock on the door and when they opened the door because they saw a friend, the robbers pushed the friend out of the way, went in, tied up the brother with duct tape, and tortured him to get the father to give up money. And uh, they tortured the brother um, in horrific ways um, and, and killed him. And then they killed the father. And blood is all over. And she was telling the story of this. And one of the things she said that just totally shook my heart, she said, you know, as disciples, my brother, she had another brother, and I, we, we settled the family 
on not being angry. Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> Settle the family on not going the route of anger and retribution. And I'm just like, and when she told the story, she said that because there was an old fashioned recorder, a telephone recorder, in the scuffle, they knocked it over, and this telephone recorder was a little broken. Whenever you hit it, it just automatically begins to record. So all of the suffering that took place in the execution of her brother and father was recorded, and the family had to hear it. Uh, I just can't imagine. But she said, as a disciple, her and her brother, uh, were able to get through that without the anger driving them. And not only themselves, but they got their family to get to a different place. And I was just, and when you read a passage like this, and Jesus says, you know what? You're going to trample snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy. And he says, nothing will harm you. That's the context that I see this in, because we know that the, the 12, in particular, were persecuted intensely. They were physically harmed. But what we see in them is that they were over, able to overcome the power of the enemy and nothing to harm, nothing to wreck their faith. That, wow, that, that's, whoa. And, and I think we... Um, we don't realize the power that we have in following Christ when we have the Holy Spirit. That that the Holy Spirit is is um, <laughs> it's the essence of God. It's the spirit and the mind of God. It was there at the beginning. It hovered over the surface of the deep. This this entity, this 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 gift that we have enables us to overcome all the power of the enemy. And I want you to realize that you, you and I, yes, we will face different things. We're going to face things that are hard, that are difficult, that are emotionally taxing, that are physically taxing. But what we see in the context of text is that Jesus says, you have a way to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm. This harm we know is not a physical one because we've seen Jesus physically harmed, beaten, and executed, but yet he overcame. We can overcome and remain faithful unto God. That is what God is telling us. And when you have the proper context for what God is saying in these things, it really enables you to deal with the, the difficulties that come. Because if you see difficulties and overcoming as, well, overcoming means I won't have difficulties, then you're going to be tortured. You're going to be tormented because you can't get by that. And, but when you understand that, man, God equips me in such a way that I can get through this. It changes your thinking and your perspective on it and you can be faithful to it. Very, very powerful in every way. Yesterday, we had a, a married couple that shared um, their testimony about their uh, son who was uh, 16, 15 years old, walking down the street in, in, this in the city of Philadelphia, and a person that had some mental challenges came up and stabbed him stabbed him a couple of times to rob him just above his heart. And the mother uh, is a uh, assistant vice principal was sharing about forgiveness <laughs> and, and how uh, she and her husband had to get to a place of forgiveness when, you know, here you are rushing to the hospital. These are the ch many challenges that we all face. We will face difficult things, but the Spirit of God, what God has given us, enables us to overcome the power, the power of the enemy. Whew. You got to love it. In verse 20, he says, though, but he says, however, do not rejoice 
that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And here's Jesus. Um, what is he getting at? He says, what is our, our hope? What we love and what we give ourselves unto is that our names are written in heaven. Uh, that's, that's the big deal. We, we want our names written in heaven. You know, you can always, uh, <laughs> combat folks <laughs> when they say Jesus never wrote anything. That's not true. <laughs> he wrote my name in heaven. <laughs> you just gotta love that. He wrote my name in heaven. Uh, and that's the thing that, uh, he says, that's what you need to rejoice over. Don't rejoice over miraculous prayers and miraculous events that may occur in your life that are clearly, that's, he, he, that's so shallow. Even the apostle Peter, uh, uh, what does he say? Uh, um, he says that uh, when I was a child, I used to think as a child, and he, he uses uh, miraculous signs and wonders as a, this, this is childish type stuff. Move on to greater mature things. Very, very powerful. Would Jesus drive a Hummer? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you're saying, would he buy one? I doubt if he'd buy one. That seems like an incredible amount of money. And I don't think that that's, that would be his focus <laughs> personally. I, I just can't, I, I can't see it. You drive a camel. <laughs> so what do we see? Your names don't sit over this. They rejoice. Your names are written in heaven. Verse 21. At, at that time, Jesus full of joy through the Holy Spirit. Now, this is phenomenal. Jesus is rejoicing here uh, over their return. And, you know, well, what is this that got him so excited? Well, this is the foreshadowing of what was to come. And, and, and you know, there's, there's few times we see this idea of Jesus really rejoicing over something, like really enthusiastically happy about anything. And, and, and here's a situation where he is. And why? Because this is the foreshadowing of when he's gone. He's seeing that these that he sent out, are, uh, thanks. Yeah. Luke 10, 21. Thank you, David. Um, he's seeing that this can happen. Like when he's gone, these individuals will actually go out and accomplish this mission because when he, he comes back from the dead, what does he do? He calls them to go and make disciples in Luke chapter 10. What does he say? Go. He, he sends these people out, Luke chapter 24, go, repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached. And so what is that causing in Jesus when he sees these individuals grasping on to the faith, grasping on to the mission and going faithfully and accomplishing the task? He's fired up. You know, uh, think about it. When Stephen was executed, if you read in in Acts chapter 6 and 7, Stephen is appointed as a deacon. Then in chapter 7, he's persecuted intensely. And the Bible says that when he was being stoned, Stephen is being stoned. What, what happens there? Um, he, he, matter of fact, let's just go read it. It's a powerful section. Um, and this is um, Acts chapter 7. And... Um, Stephen is brought in to give an account for this idea of preaching Jesus is Lord. And he has to go and appear before the Sanhedrin. Remember, these are individuals that uh, uh, banished Jesus, if you will, um, wanted him dead. And now all of a sudden there's a movement afoot and, um, <clears throat> and it's, it's, it's incredible, um, the growth that's taken place. <clears throat> and Stephen is preaching, and he gets to a section. We're in Acts chapter 7, 
verse 51, he gets to a section in this message that he's speaking where he really confronts them in their stubbornness. And in verse 51, he says, you stiff-necked people. In, in other words, hard-headed, arrogant, prideful. You stiff-necked people. Your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. Now, he calls them uncircumcised. This is highly offensive. This is, this is, <laughs> you, you want to talk about poking the bear? This is poking the bear. He says, you are just like your ancestors. You always resist what? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has been around since the beginning. And he says, you always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet? Your ancestors did not persecute it. They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. So he's accusing them of betraying and murdering Jesus. You who have received the law that was given through what? Angels. Here's the other testimony. The law was given through angels, but have not obeyed it. Here it is. He confronts them with not being obedient. Well, what is the obedience to it? The fulfillment of the law is Jesus. Verse 54, when the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious. So they're furious. They gnashed their teeth. But Stephen, listen at this, full of the Holy Spirit. Here it is. Remember, Jesus says you will overcome the enemy, all the powers of the enemy, full with the Holy Spirit. He looked up to heaven and what did he see? He saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Whoa, this is powerful. What do we see here? Uh, uh, um, Jesus is rejoicing. I mean, he's standing. I think this is the only place in the entire Bible where it speaks about Jesus standing at the right hand of God instead of seated at the right hand of God. And I think he's standing up going, yes! He's, he's just like, yes, Stephen! This is that first follower of Jesus dying for the cause of, the, of Christ. And when you go back to Luke chapter 10, where we were in verse, um, what do we see here? Jesus was filled with joy. Why? Because these people came back and they stood the call of going and proclaiming the message. And Jesus, when he saw Stephen, he's standing at the right hand of God. It, it, when we go out and, and proclaim the truth, when we go out uh, 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 and speak God's word, Jesus is rejoicing. Come on, Ralph. Thank you. Jesus is rejoicing. And, um, you know, we see it on two different occasions. We see here they're coming back very victorious in uh, going out and displaying the power of the Holy Spirit, casting out demons and healing the sick, proclaiming the coming of the kingdom of God. Jesus is rejoicing. And now Stephen, he's gone out, he's proclaiming, he's preaching and standing up. They reject him. They, no one there that we know of accepts it. Uh, maybe they did, but the, the overall uh, sentiment is rejection. And then guess what? He's stoned to death, and Jesus is rejoicing. So it wasn't the success rate that brought joy. It was the individual standing up and proclaiming the truth that brought joy to Jesus. And this is really encouraging because now you want to know what really brings joy to Christ? Go preach the message. Go speak the truth about God. Go hold out the word of God. And that brings joy to, the, to God. Wow. Very, very powerful. Hey, 
Welcome to Grounded in His Promises. This is where we get into the Word of God every morning, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a blast studying out the words just like this. If you are joining and you're a first-time guest, I want to thank you for coming to this live. Uh, you are honored guests, and I'm so encouraged about uh, your participation in this. And if you like the content that you're hearing, do me a favor go ahead and click uh, the follow. Click the follow. Why? If you click that follow, uh, what's it going to do? Well, it's going to let me know that there are people here that really enjoy this content. And as long as people are enjoying this content, guess what? I'm going to keep bringing this content. So when you click that follow, boy, it, it, it really encourages me. And... Um, and it really uh, inspires me to keep providing this content. And so what will God do with it? Yeah, I don't know. But I know we're going to have a blast doing it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We're here every morning, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's uh, when I'm here once in a while. There are things that uh, get in the way. <laughs> like yesterday, I just woke up pounding headache and I knew I had so much going on I couldn't do it or there's a scheduling conflict generally I'm here and we have a blast doing this so thank you for participating all right let's get back to uh, Luke and so in Luke chapter 10 verse 21 at that time Jesus full of joy through the Holy Spirit said I praise you Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. God has revealed this to what? To little children. God has revealed this to whom? Little children. The childlike heart gains access to the wisdom and insight of God. Notice what Jesus says, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. You know, there's an attitude, uh, childlikeness, that God has called us to have. Um, we're, we're God's children. Um, it does not say we're God's peers. <laughs> We are God's children, and we need to act like that. Um, he is our Father. Psalms 103, verse 13. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. There's a reverence. There's a respect for God, and God has compassion on those who fear him, who have a reverent respect for God. And he uses the analogy of father with children. We are God's children, and we need to act like that. And Jesus makes reference here. He revealed it to little children, little children. That's, that's very powerful. Well, what does it say about children? Oh, I need to shut the door. Hold on. All right, so what does it say in the Bible about being a children? And one, uh, they're trusting. You know, in Psalms 131, verse 2, it says, But I have calmed and quieted myself. I am like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. Again, the writer <clears throat> in Psalms is talking about the, the child's trust, the contentment when the child is in the arms of a mother, right? There's a, uh, you know, it's like, whoa, there's a trusting, there's a peace, there's a settling. Why? Like a child. 1 Peter 1, verse 14. Uh, Peter is uh, addressing 
some pastoral concerns. And in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14, look at his description. His description says, As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. So what is he saying here? As obedient children, as obedient children, you know, we all understand the expectations of children to be obedient. And Peter says, as obedient children. And when you hear this, I mean, this is what Jesus says. You reveal them to little children. This is the heart that God wants us to have. The, the heart of being wise and being a, a peer to God instead of a child of God lends itself to disobedience, hardening of heart, a rejection of trust. But God is calling us to be obedient children, right? Uh, in humility, uh, you know, we read earlier uh, in, uh, you know, Luke chapter 9, we read this earlier in verse 46 and following Jesus, or verse 47, it says, Jesus, knowing their thoughts, took a little child and had him stand beside him. Then he said, whoever welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Uh, what is? And then he says, for it is the one who is least among you all who is the greatest. So he has this child standing there beside him and talking about the least among us is the greatest. Uh, you know, it, it, it's just, um, you know, it's, it's a real spirit of humility, a spirit of obedience, a spirit of reverence, a spirit of respect. That, that's what uh, the call is. Um, and and, and it, it, it's countless times throughout the Old Testament, the New Testament, this idea of being childlike. And you don't want to uh, dismiss this because it's it's emphasizing humility. Uh, and first first Kings chapter three, uh, you know, listen to Solomon. It says in verse seven, first Kings three, verse seven. Uh, now, Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in the place of my father, David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. So initially, Solomon, in all great humility, had the right perspective. But I am only a little child. You know, it's and he's and he's making this plea before God that that's that's the heart before God. And when you understand this, you, you really, it helps you in dealing with the unknown. You know, there are many things that a little child does not understand. There are things that a little child can't engage in, can't play with, but they see adults playing with, like sharp knives, right? But you don't allow a little child to play with a sharp knife. Why? Because they don't understand the danger. They will harm themselves, but they can't grasp that. They haven't experienced that or seen someone harm themselves. And so there's so many things that they may want to do that they can't do because it is a danger to them, but they don't understand that. They have to surrender. It's like running around the house. You know, there's sharp edges on the tables. And when you get to that certain age as a toddler or so, and your head is right at the corner of those tables, right? They can't run around the house, right? Uh, and uh, you can't explain that to a child because they don't understand that. But the child has to be humble enough, right? Yes, because you got to baby proof that house, right? You, you know, you do. Uh, but the child doesn't understand that. And, but the child has to be obedient in humility. And so 
you fast forward to our own lives, our adult lives, there are things that we have to go through, things that we will face that God is calling us to be obedient to, even though we don't understand it. We have to be humble. And I love Solomon's perspective on his own life. I am only a little child. Very, very powerful um, when you think about that. The innocence of a child, right? Uh, when you think about this, this idea of being a child of God, the innocence. Mark chapter 10, verse 13, it says, People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. Uh, when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God, what belongs to such as these? Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Wow. He lays this idea of innocence, these little children. He says, anyone who does not receive the kingdom of God like one of these will never enter it. Wow. It, it's a real powerful um, statement of humility, of uh, contentment, of peace, of uh, surrender, of trusting. Jesus is laying out all of this. Uh, throughout the scriptures of being a child. Then you get to the epistles. It's the same thing. Look in Ephesians chapter 5. So here it is, long gone after Jesus. Uh, and uh, uh, what do we see in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and following? It says, follow God's example. Therefore, as what? as dearly loved children, <laughs> as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. What do we see? It, it, again, therefore, as dearly loved children, this is who we ought to be. <clears throat> um, this is who we ought to be. Innocent in every way. Thank you, David. <laughs> Thank you. I just saw that and I was like, I'm sure they will take care of that. Thank you. Uh, but that's the, you know, mindset. And I think, um, it's very important that we um, continue in that um, that vein. Uh, can we do something with that, guys? I don't know what that is, but I don't feel good about it. Thank you. I don't know what that was, but it didn't seem right. <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> uh, thank you. So it's the childlike spirit. And, and you know, it's interesting when you, it's funny, when you take on this childlike heart, it, it, it's powerful and profound in your relationship with God. Um, but here's, here's one that really is is transformative when you take on this mindset with your spouse or with race relationships with one another <clears throat> um that really changes everything doesn't it because you wind up um getting um just um <clears throat> a much better perspective on your uh, friendships, your relationships, you can uh, navigate through difficult conversations. You know, um, it, um, it, it's, it's amazing when you take on a childlike spirit 
and, and you're having a, a conflict with a friend, family member, spouse, co-worker, when you take on this childlike spirit, boy, it, it's scary because you, you feel like someone's going to take advantage of you. Um, but when you take on that childlike spirit, boy, you can, you can really uh, navigate uh, difficult conversations, disagreements, bumps in a marriage. You can really, but it's a, it's, what is it? Because it's a, it's a, a disposition of humility, vulnerability, trust, innocence, gentleness, right? You, you just, whoa, there, there's so many phenomenal um, characteristics of being a child. But then there are some challenges like maturity level, emotional maturity, things of that, reaction. But they're highlighting in the scriptures the, the vulnerability, the submissive attitude, the, the respect, the innocence, the trust, the reliance upon all of these characteristics are just powerful and profound in our relationship with God. But there is a cross, um, a crossing over of help and support when we think about our relationships, because humility, boy, it, it's a powerful, powerful one to embrace. Um, uh, first John chapter three, uh, first John chapter 3, verse 10. This is how we know, listen at this, who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does, do, who does not do what is right is not God's child, nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister. Wow. There's two different children. <laughs> the children of God and children of the devil. Whoa. <laughs> you know, John, he puts it out there. He says, look, let me just tell you, um, you know, this is how you know who the children of God are and the children of the devil. Jesus in John chapter 8 talks very specifically, you are the children of the devil and want to carry out his will. Wow. You know, so again, um, the emphasis on being a child, childlike in our heart is very biblical. You can pray about these things. You can meditate on these things and beg God to continue to help you to grow and mature in being childlike. And Jesus says, and back in Luke chapter 10, verse 21, he's like, man, these things have been hidden from the wise and the learned, the so-called smart. But he's revealed these things to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. God finds pleasure in revealing these things to little children. Verse 22 of Luke chapter 10, all things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and no one knows who the Father is except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. There is a revealing, and Jesus is saying the secret to being revealed is what? Being like a child. That is it. God will move in the hearts of those that choose humility. Why? You choose to submit yourself unto God. Verse 23, then he turned to his disciples and said privately, blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. This is incredible right here. Uh, I love that Jesus is recognizing the reality that they're not not everyone will be an eyewitness. Not everyone. This this is a unique group of people. This is a unique group of individuals that were eyewitnesses. Not not everyone got to see this. He says prophets did not even get to see this. Here are the individuals that were known as prophets that were given the word of God, to proclaim the word of God, the coming of the Messiah, or 
just God's direction for people in their day. And they were not eyewitnesses to Jesus. There were many kings that were not eyewitnesses to it. But Jesus says, blessed are your eyes. Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. Wow. Powerful in every way. And to hear what you hear. These were unique. Uh, question for you. Are there prophets still now? I do not believe there are. No, I do not. I do not believe there are prophets today. I know a lot of people call themselves prophets, but I do not believe biblically that is not what I see. Why is that? Well, it is the message is complete. Uh, the story is completed. The um, uh, the message of redemption is complete. Um, if there are prophets today, then there are still uh, individuals that can write biblical texts. Um, but we don't have that. Um, now, some people will equate prophecy or being a prophet with foretelling the future. You know, I, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, I don't, uh, the future's been told. Um, what is a bishop? A bishop is an elder. It's where we get the Greek word for being an elder. Uh, someone had a vision of a tsunami. Yeah, that's like, you know, telling the future. Now, let me, let me just say this. There are all kinds of spirits out there, you know. Um, there are all kinds of things out there that uh, are not uh, submitted unto God, uh, but are rebellious to God. So what happens there in the spiritual realm, God says, stay away from that. Um, so what, what carries someone on, you know, I, I, I leave that stuff alone. Um, you know, John says, test every spirit. There are all kinds of crazy spirits out there. Thanks, Marco. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate the support. Thank you. Can people have the gift of prophecy today? I don't believe so. I, I, I don't believe so. Um, you know, when you read through Corinthians, I did a, a whole thing on first and second Corinthians. Uh, if you go to my YouTube page at Chip Mitchell 23, I go through that. We talk uh, in detail textually as to why. Um, one of the things that we realize is that um, in Acts, when you see Simeon's convert or Simon the sorcerer's conversion, he recognizes that this power of the miraculous is only handed off by the apostles. It is, it, and, and the apostles, what we see to be an apostle, you had to be an eyewitness to Jesus's resurrection and his life. And those are qualifications that no one in this day can fulfill. So, you, that, so when they died off, the ability to pass on this miraculous gift uh, no longer existed. And we see that with Simon the sorcerer. He recognized, and he even asked Peter, he said, I want this uh, ability. He offered to pay money for it. And boy, was he rebuked by Peter for asking that. Um, so again, uh, that that's where I'm at. But I, I'm not... You know, there's a lot of people out there saying they're prophets. There's a lot of people out there that say, oh, I got a prophecy from the Lord. How does how do you test the spirits? You know, um, OK, the, the best way to do that is to compare what is in the scriptures and what you may be feeling a hunch or called to do. If it's in line with the biblical text, then, you know, that if you're getting a hunch to go do something or say something or make a decision about a job or where you want to live or a relationship, look at all the tenets of what you're considering and compare them to the biblical text. Uh, and that will help you. Uh, Do better. I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, no one gets to the Father except through Christ. So you've got to be reconciled with the text. You know, um, what would be a 
a scripture for your faith being shaky. The best a text to read is all of Hebrews. If you're talking about oscillating your faith, because Hebrews talks a lot about this idea of faith and uh, losing your faith. Hebrews is a great book to read through, and, and you can see things. I live in a new age world. Long-time demons are very cunning and clever. Absolutely. Uh, the demonic forces of evil are what they do. And when you read in Ephesians chapter 2, their attack is our thoughts and our desires. Uh, if you go over to Hebrews chapter 2, you get a chance to see what, uh, where, they fought, where they fight, where the fight is now. So Paul writes to the church in Ephesus, and in Ephesians chapter 2, watch what he says. He says, as for you, and this is verse 1, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live. Now watch this. When you followed the ways of this world, the ways of this world, and the ruler of the kingdom of air. Watch this. The spirit who now works in those who are disobedient. Well, how does he work in those that are disobedient? The spirit. All of us lived among them at one time doing what? Gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following what? Its desires and thoughts. So here, the demonic forces of evil, the spirit that creates disobedience, focuses its attention on our desires and our thoughts. So it's very important that we, our desires and our thoughts, whatever we may think is motivating us, inspiring us, urging us, we need to examine our desires and thoughts and compare them to the scriptures. And if they are in line with the scriptures, amen. Remember Jesus, before he dies, what does he say? I think it's in John 14. He says to the uh, disciples, he says, the Holy Spirit will remind you of what? What I say. Do you, do you understand? The Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God is not going to contradict the commands of Jesus. He says he's going to remind you of the things that I have said. So in other words, the Spirit is not coming to bring something new. It's only going to confirm the teachings of Jesus. Jesus' teachings will not be uh, in contrary to the Holy Spirit. You know, a lot of times people think, well, the Spirit is telling me to do this, and it's contrary to the text. And that, that's a problem. They fought hard to keep me. Yep, lies. Come on, I'm with you, Brenna. I'm with you, heart and soul. I am with you, heart and soul. It is a battle. And, and we want to, uh, uh, yeah, you know, and, and that stuff is appealing, too, because uh, we're, we're, we're bothering and stuff that we have no business tampering with. And it's intriguing, and it's empowering. And remember what Jesus says, do not rejoice over this stuff, because Jesus knows we can get caught up in that stuff. It's born of the flesh is flesh, and who's born of the spirit is spirit. Amen. Discernment is important these days. Yes, Casey, I'm with you heart and soul. Uh, I'm with you heart and soul. Uh, you know, it's just a, you know, we're, we're in a war. Uh, we really are. We're in a, a, a great battle. Um, and this is why uh, staying in the scriptures is, is, is really, really important. Uh, Acts 2.17 states that in those days, the sons and daughters shall prophesy. Yes. And they did. And they did. In those days, they did. In that new day, when the kingdom came, they did prophesy. Philip's daughters, he had four, da four daughters, and they were prophets. They did, uh, and, and surely so. That's how we got the New Testament text, is through those prophecies. Remember, when that was written, Daniel chapter 2 uh, is what he's quoting there in Acts 2. That was 750 years <laughs> prior, 750 years. And we had 500 years of silence until John the Baptist. 500 years. There were no prophecies. It was silence. So that's why he says, in those days, they will, and they did. And the prophets spoke once again, but all pointing to Jesus and his death, burial, and resurrection. Very, very powerful. Uh, so remember, read that stuff contextually 
and it just gives you a much better understanding. They're not talking about 2024. They're talking about 33 AD, <laughs> which is 500 years of silence. And now all of a sudden, the prophets are speaking once again, your sons and daughters. And Philip's daughters were prophets, four of them. Very, very powerful. But we see the prophecy ending. We see that with Papias and some of those early church leaders. We we see it end. And they were in that era where they knew those folks, but it ended. They understood that. They understood that. We were the only ones that all of a sudden started coming up with things that are just not biblical, uh, not biblically sound, and, uh, you know, just powerful in every way. Um, really, really helps me out. Uh, well, hey, guys, thanks so much for joining. Hey, if you are a first-time guest, I want to welcome you to Grounded in His Promises. This is where we get into the scriptures. Listen, I need your help and support. Two ways. If you like it, click the follow. Click the follow. Wow, that encourages me because it says, hey, there are people that like this content. And so it inspires me to keep getting up early in the morning, doing my due diligence and presenting this content. That's what it does. Click the follow. The other thing is I have a YouTube page where I put all this stuff on. Thank you, Brennan. I put all this on YouTube. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube page. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube page, go do it right now. Right now. Come on, Brennan. Thanks for the hot dogs. Go do it right now. It's at Chip Mitchell 23. Go do it right now. Go and subscribe. Why? Because I put all this content on there. Listen, uh, TikTok doesn't allow for long form content. It only allows for long form live content. But click that. That's right. Thank you, Meg. At Chip Mitchell. Go now and click and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you have access to any of the lessons that I've done. Now, I've done well over 550, I think it is, and they're all on the YouTube page. And these are full length, Some, most of them are an hour long. You have a friend, a family member, or someone you meet at work or a stranger that's looking for Bible study. It's all right there and it's free. Uh, go and do it. <laughs> go and do it. <laughs> Uh, and that way you can just send it to folks. But the other thing is maybe you may want to just, you know, on your drive into work, maybe you've got a long commute somewhere and you want to listen to uh, the whole gospel of John. Like we go through a detailed study of uh, the gospel of John. You can listen to it. These things are really helpful. And, and what does it do? It equips you for this life. It equips you for the challenges that we face in this life. Um, I mean, I'm telling you, um, there's craziness in this world, and we have to be well acquainted with the Word of God. That's the goal of this, this, um, this live. This is not a church. I'm not building a church here on this live. I am building a community that is all about the Word of God, that is learning the Word of God. We have to do better at learning the Word of God because we're too quick to have these, these short little inspirational things that I'm not against, but we have to know the Word of God. And, 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 uh, and Sunday morning, for there, it's awesome. Worship's great. And singing and praising God and a message that's inspiration. Those things are awesome and priceless. But guys, we have to add to that our deep study of the Word of God working through passages diligently. I hope that when we do this, you're learning how to go through a scripture. You're learning how to uh, um, study out the word. Um, that's what we have to do. What is idol worship? I don't know. I don't know what you're saying. Do better. I don't know what idol worship is. Um, or I don't know what you're referring to. But we have to be individuals that get into the word of God. That's it, because there's so much ridiculous things out there that are not biblically sound. And uh, we got to be people that are uh, in the word. And we read it, we study it, uh, we're inspired by it so that we can uh, thwart any false teaching that may be out there. Uh, that, that's what we got to do. And, uh, you know, I'm committed 
to doing my part in that. Well, guys, it's been a fantastic morning. I hope uh, you're feeling encouraged. Do better. Don't worship false idols. Worship Jesus. Oh, do better. It's got an issue with Jesus. Okay. Okie dokie. Is that what it is? Okay. So he's saying, calling, I'm assuming he must mean calling Jesus Lord is idolatry. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what to say to that other than that's what we're called to do. That is our, that is our faith. That is our, that is our faith. And I get it. Do better. Your, your, your argument is an age old argument <clears throat> that the Pharisees and, and that's why they stoned Stephen. That's why, uh, the uh, Pharisees and teachers, they told Peter to stop preaching in the name of this Jesus. They said, we will not. <clears throat> That's why Stephen was stoned. Uh, that's why Jesus was uh, condemned, because he said, I am the Son of Man. He, so, again, your argument is what they all argued in the New Testament. This is why persecution broke out, because... They proclaim Jesus as Lord, and they use the same scriptures you use because they use them out of context. They don't understand the fulfillment of the Old Testament uh, uh, prophecies in Christ. And, and that's a, you know, uh, John the Baptist, what does he say? He quotes Malachi. He says, make way, make a path for who? For who? Our God. Wow. Whoa. Hey. <laughs> Again, so your argument is the same argument that the Pharisees and the teachers of the law came up with against Jesus being Lord. Um, you know, so I don't, I don't know what to tell you, but that's what they, ultimately that's what drove Jesus to the cross. That's what persecution broke out against um, the Christians. And, and when you even read the history of the Romans that persecuted the Christians, they said you know, you just have to get these Christians to confess someone else other than Jesus as Lord. And then you know that they have left the faith. So they, that the, the intensity of that, um, that faith what brought people to their death. Uh, so it's very, I mean, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. That's, that's just, that's our history. That's, that's what's documented in biblical texts and in extra biblical texts. Well, guys, this is a great time. We're going to close out with a prayer here. I hope you have a great Monday. I hope the weekend went well for you. And uh, boy, uh, I'm so glad I rested yesterday because I feel so much better this morning. I don't know what it was, but maybe I just needed rest. Uh, thank you for your prayers, your support. Um, it, it's uh, been priceless. And uh, I want to thank David, Mike, you guys helping out on the back end of this. Thank you so much uh, for uh, just watching out for our group. Let's go to God in prayer and we'll close out here. And Lord willing, we shall see each other um, uh, tomorrow morning. Father, you are amazing in every way. Thank you so much for all you do. Thank you, Father, for protecting us, guiding us, and um, giving us... Uh, uh, all that we need for life and godliness. We pray that our eyes will always stay on you. We love you. We need you. We thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, guys, thank you so much for today. Uh, we got 85 subscribers. We got a new goal of 106. We're at 85, which is great. I want to thank everyone for their participation and support in the channel that way. Thanks for the likes. We're at 23,000 likes, which is awesome. You guys are fantastic. Have a blessed day. <clears throat> Stay safe. Keep your eyes uh, on God and his word. And uh, let's continue to pray for each other uh, as we are in a fierce battle for faith. And uh, let's have a great day. All right. Love you guys. Lord willing, we shall see each other tomorrow. Take care.